Sorensen format so QuickTime can stream it on the web. Process that takes a lot of CPU horsepower to do. Same exact QuickTime file on both machines? Exactly. Same program, same media cleaner on both machines? Yes. Great. So Let's like do it. Count us down. Three, two, one, go. Whoops. <laughs> Uh-oh. I started in front. Uh-oh. I blew it here. All right. We're off to the races on the Power Mac. <laughs> well, you just passed me. Yeah. Now, you can see from the readout there and the text in the bottom, for those who can read it, that the Media Cleaner Pro on the left and the Power Mac takes one minute to compress one minute of video. So real-time compression. On the right, the PC is taking two minutes and five seconds to compress one minute of video. So that means finish. we could compress this James Bond film trailer and actually then play it back in the same time it'll take the, uh, the PC to compress it, full two to one. That's amazing. We're done on the Power Mac. <laughs> and we're still working at it on the PC. Again, this is software that's highly tuned to optimize all the benefits of the Pentium 3 and running at a full 600 megahertz on the Pentium side, still two to one slower than the 500 megahertz Power PC G4 chip and Power Mac G4 system. All right, Pentium's done. Now, <laughs> now these three demos that Phil and I have just showed you. Uh, we hope for a particular relevance to you being in the design and publishing space, whether you're creating printed materials, electronic materials, obviously for the internet, etc. But we also serve a lot of other customers in science and in education. And I've asked one of Apple's distinguished scientists, Dr. Richard Crandall, to come up on stage and give us a few demos that relate to some of these fields that we've been working on. And I'd like to introduce him right now, Dr. Richard Crandall. Greetings. As a uh, career scientist and teacher, I am ecstatic about this uh, desktop supercomputing with G4. Um, over the years, I have been privileged to use, I think like some of you here, some of you, um, from time to time, supercomputing, usually uh, through giant supercomputer centers or government centers. And even so, even though we got to use some supercomputing, it was problematic, it was uh, ad hoc, and it was always too expensive. There was a time when we had to pay $1,000 for a CPU hour to get this kind of speed. However, with G4, things are going to change now. And, for example, back at my laboratory, as I speak to you, I have a brace of G4s doing a very tough calculation, one of the toughest around. And because of G4, this will finish by Halloween. If I had been using the old dinosaur supercomputers, then even during this little talk to you, I would be going bankrupt. Uh, boy, do we have some uh, supercomputing examples for you. We have three. Uh, you will see, for example, before your very eyes what a gigaflop looks like um, in, a, in, a, in an example. Uh, let's start with SETI at home, which means search for extraterrestrial intelligence at home meaning that from the, this Berkeley site, SETI at Home, a Berkeley research group, you download code that contains signals from outer space, well, data that contains signals from outer space and code to process that. On the right, you see a Pentium 3 processing this data, which is centered at 1,420 megahertz, a special cosmic frequency that we think uh, a, a remote civilization would use. That looks random, that spectrograph, because, well, if you see a pattern in that, that's a big deal. <laughs> so the SETI at Home people actually did a brilliant thing. They have had over a million downloads in over 200 countries so that there's this giant, this worldwide volunteer giant supercomputer. And so the natural question is, how would this perform on a G4? So on the left, 
you see the same kind of calculation on the same kind of data set on G4, and you can see it's obviously running faster in some, you know, qualitative sense. But in reality, it takes six hours to uh, data process on the G4, what takes 25 hours on the Pentium. That's more than four times faster. I want to say that at the core of the SETI at home software I'm showing you is an FFT or fast Fourier transform that's important in many fields, as you know, I think, which runs at supercomputer speeds. And because of that core routine that's really blazing, the whole application is four times faster. Now, uh, you've heard of the Andromeda Galaxy, and you've heard of the Milky Way Galaxy, our galaxy. Let me introduce you to the G3 Galaxy. <coughs> well, that's very respectable. That's 30,000 stars. And I need to make this point, it's important, that this is not just animation. This is calculating in real time. It's solving physics equations in a certain gravitational model. Every star is moved around according to the laws of Newton and using the gravitational constant and so on. And that's very respectable. If you do 2,000 stars, it swirls really smoothly on a G3, and that's a lot of power. But this 30,000 stars kind of brings the G3 to a, to a certain kind of a staggering mode. Now I'll show you a billion operations per second on the left. There you go. That is one way to look at a billion operations. Here's another interesting way. At a gigaflop, in the time it takes to do one operation, light travels one foot. So this means, you know, and light is, one way to think of how fast light is, it goes around the Earth seven times a second if you guide it around. It goes around the equator seven times a second. So this means that when you're running your desktop supercomputer, during one operation, the light that leaves the monitor screen has not reached your face. <laughs> okay. Again, to compare G3 and G4, we have a demonstration of cryptography. Now, many of you know, in fact, I think everyone knows, that in modern cryptography, large numbers are the key. And that this, you know, the mysteries of the way large numbers work are, you know, lie at the core of modern cryptography. And so it's getting harder and harder to do the computations necessary for security because we've all heard that just a week ago, another break of another encryption system that was, you know, maybe 150 bits and you can break 200 bit systems. And now we need to do thousand bit keys and later we'll have to do 5,000 bit keys. But this is a 1,000 bit key, which is encrypted two images, the right hand image, is the G3 image, and the left-hand image is the G4 image. And of course, G4 will pick up 128-bit chunks of the key and process that with its natural speed up. Let's race these. Three, two, one, go. Let's, let's encrypt them again just okay. to show the symmetry of the... Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> the little numbers up there in the, in the time readout show that it is 6.8 times faster on the G4. But don't get me wrong, um, we find that if, if you put standard cryptography packages on G4, they tend to run three to eight times faster than on Pentium 3, the same kind of demonstration we could have given. In closing, I would like to say that as far as students and teachers, scientists and engineers, and everyone having the supercomputer power, desktop power, I've been waiting a lifetime for this, and, or maybe two lifetimes. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Thomas. So, thank you, Dr. Crandall. Um, the last demo Phil and I are going to end on is pretty amazing. Uh, it's also a scientific demo, but it certainly shows off the computational